Uh, again, again, foods, products. Try this again. Hi, it's Helen from Precision Nutrition, and today I'm going to talk about calorie counting and why it's not an exact science that you think it is, and five limitations of calorie counting, and also what you can do instead. So we're gonna go into the five reasons why calorie counting is inaccurate or it has limitations. But before we do that, we wanna make it clear that the, the calorie balance equation or, and the basic laws of thermodynamics apply. That means that if you're taking in more calories than you're using, then you're going to gain weight. If you're using more calories than you're taking in, you're going to lose weight. So yes, calorie counting is a tool that you can use to estimate caloric balance. And yes, calorie counting is the most accurate way of measuring calories if you do it um, correctly and consistently. However, there are limitations and we're gonna go over those five limitations in this video. First, calorie counting is imprecise, meaning that there's a variability in the calories that are listed on the label or in a database. So it could be plus or minus 10 to 20% because what you're looking at is the average of the sample. Now this isn't necessarily an issue over time, but if you're doing what we call like calorie accounting in a given day and you're saying, well, I burned 100 calories according to this label, therefore I'm gonna go running for 100 calories, then you're gonna run into trouble. So as long as you, so calorie counting is imprecise because what you're looking at is an average, but your food that you're looking isn't specifically that average. Don't use uh, calories on labels to decide how much to eat or how much to burn in a given day in an exact sense. There are averages and remember that there are averages and over time they'll balance out. The second uh, reason why calorie counting is imprecise and has limitations is that we don't absorb all the calories that is listed on a database or on a, uh, a food label. So almonds are a really good example that if you eat almonds, you don't absorb all the calories from almonds. You only absorb about 68%. So that means if you had 100 kilocalories of almonds, you're only actually getting uh, about 60, 70 kilocalories actually being absorbed into your body. So you're, you're, you're getting a pretty big 30% um, difference in what you think. Also protein rich foods and fiber rich foods tend to have a bigger discrepancy from what you're actually absorbing and what is actually listed on the label or in the database. The, the third um, limitation to calorie counting that leads to, to inaccuracy is that the way you prepare your food actually changes how many calories you get from your food. So for example, if you um, decide to, to eat a handful of peanuts and then you put them in your mouth and you chew them, that takes a certain amount of effort and then you swallow them. Versus if you threw that same handful into a blender and you blended those peanuts and then you ate that food. So that you actually save the amount of energy it takes for you to chew by blending it. And also blending it actually gives you a finer and uh, more digestible version so actually absorb more of the total calories than if you chewed it unless you're really you take your time chewing the food also cooking changes how much calories you you absorb from foods so raw potato is about 100 kilocalories of energy versus a cooked potato which is about 190 kilocalories of energy so the cooking process actually improves how much uh, energy you can actually absorb from foods also protein rich foods such as steaks, if you cook them, you end up getting more energy from them as well. The fourth limitation with calorie counting that makes it imprecise is that there are individual differences. That individuals who take in the same food would not, wouldn't necessarily get the same amount of calories. And the most well-researched is looking at microbiome and how that affects uh, calorie absorption, specifically how bacteria altered bacteria can increase caloric absorption by 150 kilocalories. Lastly, people aren't great at estimating portion sizes, even when they're, they're measuring with, with, with appliances. So for example, I've yet to see somebody accurately measure a tablespoon of peanut butter. Usually they end up having double the, the portion size than they think they're getting. 
even trained nutritionists can underestimate calories by up to 30%. So what this means is that even if you're measuring and you think you're doing a good job, you could still be vastly underestimating how many calories you're eating. So what can you do? Well, if calorie counting is working for you, you mean that you're getting to your goals and it's not causing you stress and giving you headaches, then keep doing it. But if calorie counting isn't working for you, we have something else you can try. Here at PN, we suggest for people who are struggling with calorie counting and they can't do it consistently, is to try another tracking method called hand portions. And this is where you use your hand to as an estimate of how much protein, carbs, and fats you should be eating at any meal or throughout the day. For either calorie counting or um, hand portion tracking, whatever you use, you want to be doing it for at least two to four weeks consistently before you make adjustments. And after two to four weeks, if you're not moving towards your goals, meaning that if you're trying to lose weight and you're not losing weight, then you should adjust by decreasing how many calories or how many portions you're taking in or if you're trying to gain weight and you're not gaining weight, then to increasing the amount of uh, calories or the amount of portions you're taking in. Even if you're not using a perfect tool, paying attention to how much you're eating, what you're eating, and how you're feeling will change your behaviors for the better. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like button below. And so you don't miss any of our future videos, don't forget to subscribe. That makes sense. Did you get it? Plus surprise. <laughs> so close. Which I've completely forgotten what it is. What are we doing? <laughs>